Hello, and welcome to Fish Wrap TV, episode 11. Today is Friday, April 2nd, 2021. I'm your host, Janie Hansen, and I'm here with Q Lair in Blue Earth, Minnesota. On this Good Friday episode, we'll be discussing the USDA progress report and grain stocks report, wheat breaking dormancy, the farm CFO hedging update on corn and soybeans, and finally, the latest blast wave coming off the bond markets. This week's market update is brought to you by Croptimize. Croptimize combining real-time analytics, deep market expertise, and AI to take the emotions out of grain marketing and help farmers make decisions like a pro. Check them out on the web or in the Apple App Store. Thank you, Croptimize. All right, Q. In news this week, two USDA reports came out on Wednesday. The big surprise was beans. Tell us more. Absolutely. We had the uh, prospective plantings and the grain stocks come out uh, the 31st, and they were absolutely devastating surprises on the upside uh, and, of course, downside on the acreage. Um, the uh, beans, the big, big surprise at 87.6 million acres when we were looking for anywhere from 90 to 92. Oh, okay. So... Uh, they tacked that thing up the limit immediately. And then, of course, corn acres came out at 91.9. We were looking for 92 to 94. They tacked corn up the limit, too. And, of course, <laughs> drug wheat with it. Uh, so we, we had beans up 70 cents within a second. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is that the, Mars, the, the, the charts look horrible last week. And they looked horrible going into this report. And... But yet, I mean, they turned on a dime and just rocketed uh, 70 cents in no time. Uh, also, what happened, uh, you know, uh, yesterday, they opened uh, 20 higher uh, to, to get some of the uh, caught shorts out of the way and then crashed 56 cents. So it, it was a brutal day and brutal two days in the bean market. So it's a good thing we uh, had an extra day to relax after, <laughs> after that. So Recover after that. And of course, the corn uh, did relatively the same thing. Uh, you, you know, as you know, corn is much more steady, of course, than beans and, and wheat. But uh, they still tacked it up the limit. This it's been about three, four, five years since I've seen, you know, corn tacked like that. And uh, of course, it's been a long time since I've seen beans uh, tacked like that. So you know, probably 2013, uh, last time I saw beans doing like that. So anyway, uh, the, the the big news, of course, was uh, July November bean spread yesterday had a 28 cent range. They just absolutely took everybody out to the woodshed. And, you know, it, it's usually a spread that trades, you know, 20, 30, 40 cents in a year. They trade mm -hmm. 28 cents in like two hours. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So it, it was brutal. And, of course, we had a 50 cent, 56 cent break in the board and 28, 28 cents of that was on the spread. Okay. So anyway, uh, you know, corn and beans are still relatively stiff. Uh, they're not as high as they were, you know two days ago, which, which seems like an eternity yeah. uh, when, when you get markets working like this. But it was really uh, something to behold. But uh, from the grain stocks report, you know, we continue to chew into the, to the, the carryouts, uh, but those numbers were wrong to be expected by the pit. So okay. uh, the big, big thing was, was the, the 87.6 in the beans, which, to be honest, I do not believe. Yeah. I really don't believe it. Uh, I'm hearing rumors from the seed companies that they've sold enough for 90, 91 million acres. Uh, maybe a bit more, hmm. and there's just no way anybody sitting on you know three or four million acres of of soybean seed. Yeah, especially with twelve, thirteen dollars on the board. No right. way, no way. So anyway, thanks for all of my people out here who, when I said I'd bet ten bucks on ninety four and ninety two, nobody took me up on it. So I'm buying tonight <laughs> at the bar. All right, <laughs> get a glass of Malbec. You betcha. Of this. <laughs> so how about twenty two, twenty three, twenty four? Well, we st we got the uh, the bean board is is starting to tighten up, but rallying. Okay, and what happened is is when when the July no went like this, what's happening is the backboards are starting to get some lift. Okay. Okay, and then people are starting to say, okay, I'm going to sell my July that I made, you know, July no that I got some money on, and buy November or buy in backs. Okay. So we're seeing the board kind of you know split back like this. Uh, quick take on on two, three, and four. Uh, 22 is 1133, mm -hmm. so it's right in range now for us to, to take a serious look. Mm -hmm. uh, 23 is 1067, okay. and 24 is, is 1061. Wow. So you know, three and four are still relatively flat, flat to each other on, on a spread basis. Uh, and also in the corn pit, um, you know, 484 nearby, which mm -hmm. is you know pretty solid. 447 for 2022. So okay. you know, definitely into view 417, 414 on the outs, mm -hmm. on the outboards. So. You know, it gets 4:30. We'll put them. We'll put them on the view kind of calendar, mm -hmm. 
and and then we'll see if they can run to 455 you know mm -hmm. which is our magic number and, and if not we'll we'll start laying into it yeah so I know I'm a bit biased on the corn and soybeans of what I pay attention to but um, tell me some more about wheat well, wheat's coming out of dormancy. Um, you know, we're, we're literally days away from harp, you know, first cutting in, in South Texas. Um, the boards are starting to tighten up. Uh, July, July wheat, uh, Chicago 610, 572 in Kansas City. This, this spread was like 90 to a buck under uh, about six, seven months ago. So, wow. you, know, what we're, you know, the markets are smelling out that we're, we got some red wheat acres coming. And it's, it's broken about 40, 50 cents in the last uh, three, four weeks. Uh, which is, which means that they're smelling the harvest coming, and you know business has been relatively steady. Nobody's really reaching. If anybody's reaching, it's it's, it's for soybeans for for the oil crush. Okay. And you know spring wheat six eighteen. You know finally spring wheat is is, is above Chicago. So mm -hmm. I guess what I said you know a couple of weeks ago that we're going to go with the whole crop here with red wheat over both, but that's not the case anymore. So spring wheat, you know, took overtook red wheat this week. So we're beginning to rebalance the wheat markets, uh, Chicago, Kansas City, and Minneapolis. Okay. So you know, the markets, as you said, were wild with that report. So what does this mean for the hedging situation? Well, the hedging situation is is that uh, from what I see, you know, we've got, you know, the drought is really not any kind of a problem. Um, you know, if you've got your insurance on and you, if you're in the I states or, or one of the close around the I states, like we are here in Minnesota, you know, you are going to be able to have what I would consider to be a solid, you know, corn crop. So mm -hmm. you've got to be looking at these prices. Yeah. And if, if Brazil, if these numbers start coming out, uh, then we, we are going to have a situation where there's just going to be no bid. And the other thing is, is that there's something going on in Ukraine with Russia again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's only taken about what, four weeks since, you know, Biden, put his hand on the Bible and, you know, Russia is, is already massing troops on Eastern Ukraine. So okay. you remember what happened last time. So, yeah. uh, you know, everybody's got to be, you know, very, very careful right here, especially yeah. with the geopolitics. Yeah. Well, I was getting a little antsy and seeing some of these prices on the 2022, 23 and 24 in beans and, and starting to look at corn. And, you know, I was thinking about putting some out earlier this week, but then you reminded me to never trade into a report. Card that that's like one of the, the top five cardinal rules of trading. It, and you learn that early because uh, I didn't do it once and it cost me like 35 grand. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I thought I was dead right. I was going to be a hero. Went into a crop production report. I was dead wrong, and they just woodshedded me. Mm. So you just, you know, take a beat, <laughs> see what happens. And... Yeah. And, well, the thing is, you know, the, the key to being a successful trader is surviving your mistakes. And you know, any mistake I made was was you know, I, I could survive it. Had yeah. a couple close calls. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they almost toe tagged me a couple times, but yeah, still but just, survived it. Just seeing God. <laughs> yes, yeah, just saw God. I didn't get toe tagged. <laughs> Live to fight another day. Yes. So, but yeah, I got to notice that margins are going up on Monday yes. for corn and beans. Yeah. Well, anytime you got a set, you know, seventy and, and fifty cent ranges in the day, you know, they're they're going to have to you know make you pay for the risk and mm -hmm. find out if you really got it. I mean, if you really want to, you know, you got to pay up to to own this stuff. And you know, long story short, at the beginning, you know, back in May. So we're coming up about 12 months ago. Uh, the margins were about 1,750 bucks for beans. Now they're up, at, you know, over 3,000. Yeah, yeah. So it's they really keep jumped. going. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, is that you know they, this keeps going. They're going to go even higher. So for the, uh, the rookie traders, they raise the margins when the volatility goes up. Yep. Is that the yep. indicator? Yep. Okay. So it, you know, it, it's like if you think about, it, uh, if you look at the high low of the day, we call that range. Mm -hmm. And then if, if that range starts to get bigger, we call that range expansion. Okay. And we, when range starts to expand, we know there's going to be margins mm -hmm. uh, increases, which means that this, the clearing carb is going to make sure you got it to be playing this game because it is, they're taking no prisoners in these beans and bean spreads, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's helpful, you know, talking with you about how to plan ahead for this to make sure I had that you know, line of credit and, and stuff for my margin. Exactly. So, exactly. So, and speaking of margins, what about any further repercussions from the bond debacle a few weeks back? Well, we had the big one today. You know, the, it was Monday, of course, and but over the weekend, um, a, a, the guy who runs T Tiger International, uh, his name is Wang, uh, got a $20 billion margin call. Ouch. And as, as the onion begins to peel about, you know, what is really going on here, this is going to be as big as the big short 
Yeah. So uh, they're what's like going the big on long. Here? <laughs> yeah, it's, I call it the big long. And I got a few, you know, tickles, you know, on Twitter about that one. <laughs> but uh, this guy had a fifty billion dollar line of credit with Goldman Sachs, apparently, and that's not including what he had at Morgan Stanley and everything else. In, oh wow. And J.P. Morgan, and he got a twenty billion with a B dollar margin call. Now the thing is, I, you know, I've been around this game a long, long time, and I remember when KKR, the mm-hmm. the, the the buyout guys yep. bought uh, Nabisco for $20 billion and they thought it was impossible that they were going to do <laughs> no, this, it, That's not the trade. It's the margin call. That's the margin call. So it, it's like the, the game is much, much, much bigger. Hmm. So, all right. Any other updates from this week? Uh, outside of uh, everybody's got to watch out what's going on in, in the Ukraine with Russia again. So here we are again. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's right in the wheat belt too. Mm-hmm. So... It it wouldn't surprise me, but you know who knows what Putin's up to, and you know when the cat's away, the mice are going to play yeah. over there in, <laughs> in in the Black Sea. So, but uh, besides that, it's uh, we're going to see what everybody's got next week once the margins go up and and uh, and the dust settles. Mm-hmm. Great. So, well, that's a wrap for this week's Fish Wrap TV. Um, everybody enjoy the holiday weekend. We're skipping our post game show today, so our production team can head over to our new neighbors here in town, Average Joe's Bar and Grill. Uh, we'll be grabbing a preview of their soon to be opening happy hour hotspot here in Blue Earth. Thanks again to our sponsor, Croptimize, and we'll see you next week.